Well, look what we have here. You work on one Audi and they come out of the woodwork. Well, this one is a 2016, the letter is a G, Q5. And it's here for routine maintenance, but the biggest problem is the steering. No assist, and then it gets loose. And then it's tight and loose and tight and loose. And I suspect the universal joint going into the steering gear is rusty. So we're going to lift it up and have a look at that. So you need to remove that uh, plastic shield. There's three retaining screws uh, that go into the back here, right here, here, and one in the middle. Plus you got to drop this corner screw here and then pull two plastic push pins out here. Now that universal joint that I'm talking about is right here. So I suspect one of the crosses is, is rusty in there. Although it doesn't look as bad as you normally would see, it doesn't take very much. So we're going to spray it with some penetrating fluid and try working it and see if it frees up. Uh, you can't replace these U-joints, you'd have to replace this intermediate steering shaft. So if we can get it freed up, that'll be good to go. We might actually uh, try and undo it and, and work it, but I think I'll get an assistant inside the cab and turn the steering back and forth. So I've undone the steering shaft and you can see that it pivots this way fine, but it doesn't pivot the other way. So it's this cross that's seized. So it's the one opposite the, the bolt. This cross moves perfectly fine, but this cross is seized. Okay, well, it should have the steering shaft replaced, but I'm going to see if I can drill into this little cap on either side and inject some penetrating fluid in it. So I managed to get it freed up, but the proper fix is to replace the intermediate steering shaft. I had to pick the seals out of there, and then I got some penetrating fluid into the rollers. So now that there's no seals in there, it's probably going to rust up significantly faster. I'm going to put some gear oil on those crosses, this one here and this one here. But it needs an intermediate steering shaft. So now that I've got the steering working, temporarily at least, and I've done a service on the engine, there were some fault codes in the engine control computer, and this one's come back, coolant pump 2. Uh, it set the fault code immediately as soon as I cleared the codes. It had a uh, EVAP code as well, but that could have been the loose gas cap or something. I'm not worried about that. But this coolant pump 2 code, P261A or 18062. Well, the interesting thing is I finally found out where that little hi sucker hides. I'll show you. Okay, so it's down in the left rear corner of the engine. You can just see the housing of it there. But I see this connector hanging here, and it's obviously been unplugged and taped up. And I don't know why somebody would disconnect that coolant pump, but it's disconnected. I'm looking in there with the bore scope at the at the connector. Let's see if I can get a picture of this. It's not plugged in. There's the connector. I double checked on the schematic and those are the wire colors. There's a gray and blue, uh, yellow, and a brown. Yellow and orange I think it is. Yellow and orange. So I'm going to talk to the customer and find out why that pump's been unplugged. That's an after-run pump. I think it's to circulate coolant through the turbo after it shut off. So the strange thing is somebody unplugged this and plugged this connector into it. That has no terminals in it, no resistor or anything in it. And it's plugged in. And of course the connector where it plugs into the actual water pump you can see the connector there. It looks pretty clean. I'm going to spray some uh, silicone spray in there and blow it out. Put some dielectric grease and plug it in and see what happens. So I'll see if you can get a look at where this connector actually lives back here. There's the connector right down on the very bottom of the screen. Doesn't want to focus though. So. 
Yeah, it doesn't want to focus. But I got it plugged in. We're going to rescan it and see if that code goes to history. I'll also see if I can command the pump on. So we're going to do a, I'm going to select the actual engine controller rather than doing a network scan here. Got the key on. Let's read fault codes. And let's clear the codes. Done. Go back. Read fault codes. Well, it cleared the code now. I guess it. Let's see if that bidirectional test is in output. Select an output. Coolant pump. Only list one, or it's called coolant pump number two. So we'll try this one. Start. I can hear it running. Yeah, I was running. Now it stopped. We'll just scan it one more time to see if it set any codes for that pump. Done, go back. Fault codes, no fault codes. So why was that pump unplugged? I talked to the customer and he had no knowledge of it being disabled. I don't recall the check engine light being on when I drove it in, but then again it may not affect emissions so it may not turn the light on. Hmm, that's interesting. So I did find this TSB in Identifix that actually has the P261A-00 code, which is the code that I had in history. And it just basically says revised warranty updated service part coolant pump B control circuit open is the one I had, I guess because it was unplugged. And it says replace the auxiliary coolant pump. It doesn't say anything about disconnecting it, bypassing it, disabling it. But somebody obviously did that. It wasn't just a case of being unplugged. Somebody unplugged it and actually capped the connector. Now, you would think if there was a TSB on it that they would have reflashed the ECM so that it no longer set a fault code for that if it didn't need that pump, but I'm sure that it needs that pump. My understanding is that pump circulates coolant through the, after the engine is shut down to help cool down the turbocharger. It's working now, so we're going to let it go at that and uh, see what happens. Thanks for watching. So that's interesting. I tried to keyword search here for P261A and Identifix, and it, does, it finds a, a case where that code was mentioned, but they that were diagnosing a fuel trim problem. Even tried P adding 00, and it didn't find it. The way I actually found it was by typing in water pump and doing a keyword search for water pump. And that's where I found this. And that 261A00 is there. Why isn't it finding this TSB based on the based on the keyword search? Hmm, I hate when that happens. Now you can't trust the keyword search. Oh well, just to make life interesting.